Hi, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, big hi, hello, welcome. Glad to see you here. Thanks for taking time out of your day and spending a little bit with me. Today I'm going to be demonstrating one of the projects from our subscription box. Details below if you're interested in checking that out and becoming a subscriber. Okay, so this video today is going to be a little bit different. The project we're doing is a charm bracelet. So what this means is there will be short sections of instructional video for each particular component that's used in the charm bracelet that'll all be strung together. And then at the end, um, I will show you how I put it, all the pieces together to create the final piece. So it's a little bit different. Um, I will have um, time time noted in the description box below for the various segments. So if you know how to do some of the components and you don't want to watch that video again, you can just skip to the ones that you know. They are also videos that we have done previously. So there is um, videos out there for you to watch if you find that you need a little bit more than what's in this video today. All right, guys, so hopefully that all makes sense. And at the end of this, you will have a fabulous bracelet that you love wearing. All right, guys, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so we want to uh, start this weave by just creating um, a chain that is one, one, and then two rings. So here I've got one and one, and I'm going to put two in the end here. And you can see that I've put a twist tie on the other hand. You're going to need that so that you've got something uh, to hold on to for this weave. Okay, so I'm just closing up our last two sets of rings. Okay, so there's our weave, our, sorry, our chain so far, one, one, and then two. So taking up another opened ring, we then want to hold our work so that the um, pair of rings is facing flat towards us. We're not seeing its edge, we're seeing the full face of the ring. Taking our new ring, we're going to feed it through that pair of rings there and then holding on to the twist tie on the other end and still grasping your pliers and ring in this end, we're going to bring our opened ring back towards the first ring in our weave. We're going to feed it through that ring, being very careful never to disturb the pair of rings position. You can see that that maintains that same sort of position all the way through. Okay, bring it back towards the first ring, go through the first ring and close it up. Okay. And this is what our work looks like so far. So you've got that barrel look, the double vision there. And then just to finish that up, we're going to put another ring in place here on the side. So you can see these two rings here. Okay this ring and this ring, we're going to feed our next open ring up through them so that it mimics our first ring. You can see that it's locked it all in place and we want to close that up. So that is basically the one barrel or one section of double vision. So what we want to do now is again recreate our first chain with this ring here being our first ring our first single ring, then our second single ring, and then our pair of rings. So you just want to recreate that. Okay. And then once you've got that starting set of rings again, take up another opened ring and do the same as you did before. Go through your pair of rings, bring your opened ring towards the first ring in that sequence, that new sequence, go straight through there and close it up. 
Okay. And then of course we want to lock our weave in place. So we just go through those two side rings just there. Close that ring up. And that's it guys. So we just again want to start that, have that starting chain of one, one and then two rings. And you just keep doing that for the length of your bracelet that you need it to be. And that's it. That's all there is to doing uh, double vision. So go ahead and finish that to the length that you require. And then we can move on to creating some of the charms that we will use in the bracelet. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do the Nocteo 4 unit. Now I am demonstrating in rings that are a larger gauge than uh, what is suggested in the materials, but that is just to be able to show you easily how to create this weave. All right, so to start with, we want to close our four medium sized rings, okay? And then once we've done that, open up one of our large rings and pop those four rings onto that ring Okay, close that ring up and we want to double our large ring. So open up another large ring, feed it through your uh, four medium rings and close it up. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. We want to now take up one of our small rings and we're focusing on two of our medium rings at this stage. And we basically want to have one ring standing upright and one ring lying down eventually. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to take our small ring and put it through one of our medium rings. And then we're going to bring that small ring down between our large ring. And we're going to come in and we're going to scoop up our second medium ring. We're gonna come up through the bottom Okay, up through the bottom of that medium ring, back up through the large rings, and then we're going to close that up. Okay, and our work should look like this. We're then going to rotate our work clockwise, so what was our horizontal ring before becomes our vertical ring, and we're going to bring a new medium ring into it. Taking up our small ring, we pick up the medium ring, come down and pick up our new medium ring, coming through the back and up through the top. Okay, close that ring up and your work should look like this. Again, rotate your work once clockwise so that your horizontal ring now becomes a vertical ring. Take up another small ring, feed it through your vertical ring, bring it down between your large rings, come up and scoop up your new ring there, our new horizontal ring, coming all the way up through to the top of our large rings and then close that up. Okay, so we've got four of our small rings locked into place. We now just want to lock our last small ring in. So we turn our work once more so that our hor previously horizontal ring becomes our vertical ring. And we're just going to pretty much do the same with our final two rings here. I'm gonna come in, we're gonna scoop up our vertical ring, go down between our large rings. And then we need to come up through the bottom of the horizontal ring, bringing our ring all the way up until it comes through a large ring and then we close it up. Okay. 
and there you go, that's your finished knot Teo unit. Okay, so to start the Byzantine diamond, you need to close up eight of your small rings. So go ahead and close up those. And then we want to take up one of our large rings and onto that large ring we're going to pop all of our small rings that we've pre-closed. Okay, so pop the eight of those on. Again, I'm working in rings that are slightly larger than what you will be doing to make the bracelet. But this is just so that you guys can uh, see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. Okay, so once you've placed all those rings onto a large ring, double up your large ring, simply by putting it through all of your small rings. And then once you've done that, you want to take up another one of your small rings and you want to put that through two of the rings that are already in there, okay? And then you want to double that ring up. Okay, and you want to do that all the way around your um, work, picking up a pair of rings with a small ring and then doubling that small ring up. So you go ahead and do that. And um, I'll meet you back here once it's done to show you what you will do next. Okay, so once you've doubled up all those rings, put them into pairs, double them up, your work should look like this. And next we want to start creating our half Byzantine unit. So taking up one set of rings, separating them out like this, we want to flip ring either side like you would in Byzantine, fold those rings all the way back against your work, separate out your end pair of rings there to expose that little space, where of course you place your next small ring, pop it through there, making sure you pick up all the rings there and then you want to double that ring up. Okay, just put it through another ring through the same space and there you go, you've finished a half Byzantine unit and we want to do this all the way around our work. So again, go to a new pair, a set of rings, flip them back, Create that space in there for your new ring to go into and feed your new ring into there. Okay, close it up and double it up. Okay. Move on to the next pair and do exactly the same. So we want to do this as I said, to all of the sets of rings that we've got until we've got four half Byzantine units created around our large set of rings. Okay, so there we've got three. I'm just going to do the final one quickly. Okay. Place our locking rings. So once you've created your four half Byzantine units, your work should look something like this. And now we want to start joining these units to each other to create the diamond shape. So to do that, we take up another one of our small rings and we go to one of the half Byzantine units and we're going to feed our new ring just through the two rings on one side there, okay? Of one unit and then we're going to feed it through the same two rings on the unit next to it. Okay, close that up and we're just going to do that all the way around our piece. So another small ring, put it through the two rings that are left on that unit there, two rings from our new unit next to it. Close it up, move around. Just do the same until you've joined all of the sections 
of half Byzantine to each other. Okay. So once you've done that, you can see that it's created the diamond shape. Now we're just going to tighten this up a little bit by popping another ring through each of those points, those joining points. So this just sort of helps uh, bulk it out and stabilizes those rings on top a little better. So just go through and place a new ring through each point, going through the same path as the ring that you placed previously until you have placed four new rings. Okay, so we've got one more to place. There you go. So there you go, there's your finished Byzantine diamond unit. Okay, so each unit uses 16 of your small rings and one of the larger rings. So what you'll need to do to start is you'll need to close eight of your small rings and the rest of the rings um, will need to be opened. Now you can do that uh, before you start or you can do it as you're weaving. That's totally up to you. Okay, so once you've got uh, your eight rings closed, take up your large ring, open that up and pop those eight rings straight onto it. Three, four, five, one escaped, six, seven, eight. Okay, and once you've got them all on, close your large ring up. And then taking up an opened small ring, feed that through two of the rings that are already in place. Close that one up and repeat that around your work until you've got all of the original eight rings paired up onto one. Okay. So this is the third set and one more okay. all right so once we've got all of those rings placed we should look like this and we need to for our next step we need to fold down that ring that we just added into the center for two of our pieces, okay? Because what we want to do now is we want to place a ring to lock this, these rings into place and we're going to put it through this eye here that's formed by the rings on this pair and through this eye here that's formed by the rings in this pair here. Okay, so to do that, take up one of your opened small rings. Now I like to come from the back through to the front. I just find it easier when it comes to closing this ring because you're not fighting with all these rings here at the front so much. It may vary for you, so do what works best for you, but I like to come up through the back of my weave, through those two rings, and then give it a little twist and go down through the front of the ring with the next pair over. Okay, and then close that up. Okay. And your work should look like this. So this is the ring that we've just placed just here. So we wanna do that all the way around. So we move around to the next so here's our loose ring we fold that down and again the spot we're looking for is the eye that's formed by these two rings here and these two rings over here okay so again I'm going to go through the back of the weave 
and I'm going to pick up this ring here on the side and the ring that we folded down. Okay, can you see that? If you're having trouble seeing the eye, basically we're going to pick up this ring here, this wing, and where it overlaps with the ring that we folded down. Okay, so just straight through there. We're going to bring our work around and we're going to go through the eye in the other two rings there. Okay, straight through there like that, bringing it out to the back and then close that ring up. Okay, move it into position and our work looks like this at the moment. So we're going to do that once more. We go to our next and our final loose pair of rings. We're going to flip that end ring down so it sits in the middle like all the rest. And you can see here the eye that's forming with our new rings and with our old rings. And it sounds like Oberon wants to come inside. Everybody wants to be in the craft room today. All right, guys. So again, up through the back, turn it around, come down through the front. Okay. And then close it up. And then we're just left with these rings here that now need to be locked into place. We don't need to fold any down because we've folded all our loose rings down. We just need to now lock these rings into place. Now this last ring can be a little tricky. So take your time with it. Again, we're going to come up through the eye. It's formed by these two rings. Come around and go down through the eye that's formed by the two rings beside it. Okay, close this ring up. Okay, and that there is your Vipera star unit. We're now going to be working on the reverse Teo flower. And to do that, we're going to pre-close seven of our rings. And then once you've pre-closed seven of those, pop two of them onto an open ring. Now we're not gonna close this ring yet. We're going to create an orbiting ring, our first orbiting ring. And to do that, we're going to grab the ring here that's on the right side of our work. And we're going to bring that up and through the opening of our ring here and just flop it over drop it off so you can see there that it uh, just orbits the rings it doesn't go through anything once you've done that you want to close that ring and then we're going to take up another open ring feed on closed ring and before we close this ring up we're going to feed it through one of these rings here on the end the, one of the non-orbiting rings it doesn't matter which one it is just pop it through one of those okay making sure that our pre-closed ring is on the right and we're going to make an orbiting ring out of it like we did before just bringing it up and through the gap letting it fall so that it orbits the rings that are in the weave we're going to close that up and we need to create one more orbiting ring just the same way as we had with the others popping on a pre-closed ring this time going through what is very obviously the center ring and then creating that third orbiting ring in the base of our weave okay so this is what your work should look like and what we want to do now is we want to go through and we want to double these rings up here that are loose okay so to double it up we just put it through the same path as the ring that we are doubling okay nice and simple close that up move to the next spot double that ring up Double 
out the third ring so that we end up with three pairs of rings on the outermost edge of our work. All right. So there you go. This is what our work currently looks like. And now we want to place some more orbiting rings. So to do that, take up an open ring, pop on one of your pre-closed rings. And before you close this ring up, we want to feed it through two of the orbiting rings that are here. Okay, so just go straight through those and again, create an orbiting ring with that pre-closed ring, just the same way that we did before. Okay, bringing it up and through the gap of our opened ring. It's a little bit more fiddly because you've got more rings in the way. So just have patience with yourself. Uh, you will get there. Okay, so that's what our work currently looks like. So we need to place one of those rings all the way around the center. And we need to make sure that each ring gets placed in the same position in relation to our center ring. So our new ring here is sitting on top of our center ring. So we want all our pre, uh, our, all our subsequent new rings to also sit on top of the center ring. So again, we're going to go to the next spot here. We're going to go straight through those two, create the orbiting ring. Okay, close it up, move around our work. Again, making sure we stay on the same side as the previous rings that we placed create the orbiting ring and close your ring up. Okay, so this is what our work currently looks like. We now want to flip our work over so that these rings that were previously on the top now become on the bottom. And this is where it gets a little tricky. We want to place some new rings now in between each of our pairs. Okay, and they need to scoop up this ring here on this side and this ring here on this side. All the while staying on the opposite side of the center ring to these horizontal rings here. So to do that, we go in between that pair of rings. We scoop up that ring there beside it bring it all the way around, scoop up that same ring on the other side there, and then make sure that this ring feeds underneath the second pair ring. So it it's pushes that pair of rings apart. And then we just want to close that up. Okay, and you just want to do that all the way around your work. So again, take up another ring, move to the next pair of rings in your work, this pair here, bring that ring in between them, turn it so that it goes through that ring there beside, comes back, feeds up between that same ring, or the similar ring on the other side, and continue to feed that ring around so that it goes underneath the other ring in that starting pair. And then once you've got that in place, close it up. Okay. And our work looks like this. So we've got one more ring to place over here. So we do exactly as we did before. Go through the center rings, pick up the ring beside it, Okay. Bring our ring back all the way around till we pick up the similar ring on the other side. Making sure when we feed it around that it goes underneath the second ring in the pair. And that we close that up. And that's it. That's your reverse Teo flower completed.
I'm going to pop on my bicone, which was the six millimeter bicone. And then I'm going to take up my short nose pliers. I'm going to put it against the bead like that, snug against the bead, and I'm going to fold that wire back to a 90 degree angle. Okay, and then come in with my round nose pliers. I'm going to slip that into that bend that I've just made there. I'm going to bring that wire all the way back to me as far as I can get it to go. And then just going to shift my pliers sideways so I can continue to bring that wire all the way around and bring it back out pointing towards the back. So as you can see, I've created a little bit of a loop there. All right. So what I want to now do is take this remaining tail and carefully wrap that around that neck section that we left there when we placed our short nose pliers. And wrap that around there until I get to the bead. And then I'm going to cut that extra bit off. But once I've cut that off, I'm just going to give that end a little bit of a squish. Be very careful. We don't want to damage the Swarovskis. They are crystal. They will break if you manhandle them. So be very gentle with your pliers anywhere around your Swarovskis. Okay, so here is my final um, bracelet with all my charms and beads added. So the placement of these will obviously depend on the length of your bracelet. If you've made it up to the full 20 centimeters that I have, then you can see that I've put a space here after the third, every third, sorry, a charm after every third section of double vision. That worked out for me. As I said, it might be completely different for you. And the order and, and stuff that you want to place it in is, again, totally up to you. It's your charm bracelet. But to just finish this off now, I just need to add a clasp. So I'm just going to grab one of um, my rings. Now you can use a smaller ring or you can use the same size ring that was used in the bracelet. And I'm just going to pop it through the end and then pop the clasp on. Okay, and then on the other end, I'm just going to put a single ring to um, close that clasp on once I'm wearing it. Okay, but that's it. That's your uh, charmed, I'm sure, a bracelet. As you can see, it's made up of some gorgeous little charms. Uh, you can put as many of these on as you like or as few as you like. I just thought it was a great idea um, and another way to utilise um, our unit weaves. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay guys, well that's it. That's the tutorial for today. I hope you managed to watch all the way through to the end and that you love the little charm bracelet as much as I do. It's a great way of incorporating weaves that you've already learnt and you certainly don't have to stop at these four units. There are many other unit charms that you could also make up and put on this bracelet. All right guys, I hope you did enjoy the video today. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here at YouTube, share the video, leave any comments or questions that you'd like down in the description or down in the comments section, sorry. We'd love to hear from you guys and we try to answer as many of your questions and comments as we can. Okay, also while you're here, um, if you're not a subscriber, then consider doing that. Uh, that would really be uh, helpful to us. It encourages us to keep going with these videos for you in the future. While you're here, don't forget to check out all the other videos that we've got. At time of recording, there is over 160 tutorial videos on our channel, and I'm sure you'll find something that is uh, exactly what you need. And last but not least, don't forget to check out our shop link up here in the corner, where we sell all the tools and um, supplies that you see in these videos. All right guys, thanks again for popping along, spending some of your day with me, and I hope to see you again sometime in the very near future. Okay, bye now.